Thanks for tuning in. Santa Claus is in just a few days and I wanted to bake something that I grew up eating on Santa Claus Avond. As a matter of fact, it was our upstairs neighbor that used to make this every year. Santa Claus is just around the corner and you know what that means. Gifts, surprises, family time, traditions, and of course, delicious treats. Santa Claus is one of my favorite Dutch holidays and I grew up celebrating it with my mom, my dad, my sister, and of course, our upstairs neighbors. I've made gevulde speculaas before. If you've missed it, don't worry. I'll put a link to that recipe in the description below. This year, we're switching it up a bit. Forget about those thin windmill cookies you used to. Today, we are making speculaasbrokken, thick and oh so crunchy. The ingredients we need are 350 grams of self-rising flour, 185 grams of brown sugar, 175 grams of chilled butter cut in little pieces, 50 milliliters of milk, a pinch of salt, 30 milliliters of heavy cream, almond slivers, enough to decorate your uh, speculaasbrokken with, and 20 grams of speculaaskruiden. Now I have made a video before of making speculaaskruiden, so I'm going to post a link to that in the description below. Let's get started with the dough. First, I'm going to put all the dry ingredients in my mixing bowl and combine them with the paddle attachment. Salt, brown sugar, helps to actually turn it and attach it, like that. It's clear I haven't done this in a while. Start on slow so you don't end up wearing all these ingredients. I've stopped it and I'm going to just check with my spatula that all the brown sugar is broken up. I've broken up some of the pieces that were on the bottom and I'm going to turn it on for a few more seconds. Oh, smells good. Everything is combined. I'm now going to add the butter to the bowl. And again, I'm going to start the mixer on slow and then increase the speed and let it run until the butter is broken up into very small pieces. If it looks like the butter isn't breaking up, you can always help it with your spatula, break it into little pieces and make sure that all your flour is getting some of the moisture of the butter. I think it looks pretty good, so let me check it out. As you can see, it looks very crumbly. St still some pieces of butter, but now it's time to add the, the milk and have it really come together in the mixer. After adding the milk and the mixer running, you can see that the dough is starting to become bigger clumps. So we're going to let it run for a little bit longer and then we're going to finish it with our hands. You can see that it's really coming together and the last little bit I'm going to do by hand. So let's take everything off. You can tell that it's holding a shape, so I'm just going to give it a little bit of a knead 
to turn it into a single ball of dough. I'm doing it in the bowl, but you can do it on a clean counter as well. Okay. Oh, it smells so good. Cinnamon, nutmeg, cardamom, all those familiar speculas smells. So if you still see little pieces of butter, that's fine. I had a couple of clumps of brown sugar still that I just kind of kneaded away by hand. So now it's time to wrap it in some plastic wrap. And we're going to wrap it tightly in the plastic wrap. And then it's going to rest in the fridge for at least an hour, but you can do it overnight. That's even better. It really gives the flavors of those spices a chance to uh, develop. If you're enjoying this video, please click the like and subscribe button. It will really help our channel. And if you want YouTube to notify you whenever we post a new video, click the bell. It's time to roll out the dough. First, I'm going to flour my work surface as well as my rolling pin. Going to unwrap the dough and just push it down with my hands first a little bit before I start rolling it. I'm not the best at rolling, <laughs> rolling out dough, but for speculaasbrokken, the nice thing is I don't really have to worry about it being a perfect square or rectangle because when you serve it, it's gonna be broken up in chunks. I do wanna make sure it's evenly uh, thick across uh, the entire surface. So I'm using a rolling pin with bands that are 3 8 of an inch or about a centimeter thick. And it's okay that the edges are a little bit cracked. It's not a problem. I think I actually did pretty good today. Now I'm going to transfer it very carefully to my cookie sheet that I lined with some parchment paper. It rolled out a little bit thicker than I thought, so not every um, part of the board was properly floured. So I'm going to use an offset spatula with a little bit of flour on it to remove it from the counter. I'm going to try to do that trick where you use the rolling pin to move it over. There you go. I'm going to fix the little cracks. And now I'm going to put some of my almond slivers on here. You can use half almonds, you can use almond pieces, uh, anything you like. Just push it in a little bit so that they stick. I like a good amount of, of them on here. This is completely up to you. And now I'm going to brush a little bit of heavy cream over all of this. Not a ton, just enough to make it a sh give it a sheen. And if some of your almonds move as you're doing it, just put them back or push them in a little bit further. It's gonna be okay. Nobody's gonna look too carefully at what the, where the almonds are. Andre Spekulas, they're just going to enjoy the flavor. And I just noticed that I really have n not enough almonds on the right here, so I'm going to just put a few more on there. And I'm going to finish brushing it with the cream. And now we're going to put it in the oven. I'm going to put it in the, on the middle rack in the oven. Now that the speculas is in the oven, it's going to bake for 30 minutes. It's been 30 minutes, so time to take it out of the oven. While it was baking, the whole kitchen just smelled like speculaas kruiden, and it really got me into the mood for the holidays. All right. 
Now we're going to let it cool on a rack. As you can see, it was still soft and pliable while it's hot. We're gonna let it cool, and once it's completely cooled off, it will be nice and crunchy. And then we're going to break it, which is gonna give you those nice rough edges that people expect from their speculaasbrokken. Our speculaas is cooled off, so let's give it a try. Ah, I love that smell. Eet smakelijk. You know, it's so good, I'm gonna have another bite. Mm. I don't know if you can hear that crunch, but mm, so good. The flavor of the spices, the warmth that it gives, really fits this cold winter night and brings me back to celebrating Sinterklaas with my family as a kid. I absolutely love it. I have an old Verkade cookie tin that I'm gonna put the rest of the Brock Speculaas in. You can enjoy this with a nice cup of coffee, a cup of tea, or even a cup of hot chocolate. This isn't all gonna fit in my cookie tin, so I'm gonna have to find another container for the rest. I hope you have a great Sinterklaas and that the Goed Heilig Man brings you all the gifts you asked for. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click the like and subscribe button and don't forget to share it with your friends. If you have any questions about the recipe, please post them in the comments below. I have the written recipe with both metric and imperial uh, measurements on my website, twanskitchen.com, and you can follow me on social media. If you make speculaasbrokken, I would love it if you post a photo on Instagram with the hashtag twanskitchen. I will share it in my story and on my website. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.